జార్జియా గవర్నర్ గా బ్రెయిన్ కెంప్ ప్రమాణ స్వీకారం చేశారు జార్జియా ఎనబై రెండవ గవర్నర్ గా పనిచేసిన నాతల్ డీల్ పదవీ కాలం ముగియడంతో జనవరి పద్నాలుగవ తేదీన జార్జియా ఎనబై మూడవ గవర్నర్ గా బ్రెయిన్ కెంప్ పగ్గాలు చేపట్టారు to be here today as Georgia's Lieutenant Governor. Governor Kemp, congratulations again to you and your family. I really look forward to serving with you and your administration in the years to come. I was slightly concerned at where our relationship got started because of the whole Georgia-Georgia Tech divide. <laughs> Felt like it was going to be a difficult hurdle to climb. Uh, the first 80 plus times we met seemed to be on campus or around campus in Athens. <laughs> It's obvious with your selection of this arena on Georgia Tech's campus, you're finally ready to work through that divide. <laughs> I stand here today as the most grateful and thankful man to ever walk the face of the earth. The list of friends and family that helped us get here are endless, and I'll never be able to mention them all by name, but you know who you are. Especially sincere thank you to my parents, who always believed in me. My wife's parents, equally, who has always believed in me. My sister and her family, and my brother-in-law and their family. I promise I will not make you wave a sign, send an email, or show up to a fundraiser for years to come. I want to spend the majority of my time here today thanking four people that mean the world to me, literally. My wife, Brooke, and my three boys, Parker, Baylor, and Ryder. my big dreams since I was 17 years old. Strange enough as it is, with all the baseball we've played in our lives, we first met on a football field. I was a high school quarterback and she was a trainer on the football field. She started to believe in those big dreams when I was in high school and I had this crazy idea that I wanted to go play college baseball. And I got to play here at Georgia Tech. Then I had another crazy dream that she believed in and that was to go play professional baseball against all odds. Then after our career was, was over, I had a crazy dream to start a business out of our living room, and she was with me every step of the way. Then I had a crazy dream to run for a state house position out of nowhere, and she was with me every step of the way. And now I have a crazy dream to run for lieutenant governor against all odds, and she has been with me every step of the way. My respect for you is endless, my love for you is endless, and my gratitude for you is endless, and you are truly a gift from God. I learned so much from you every single day. Being the oldest of three boys is no doubt hard and comes with its challenges, but you seem to do it so well. At 16 years old, your ability to make good decisions is enviable, and you are an incredible role model to your brothers and to your dad. You are truly a gift from God. <laughs> Baylor, you, you literally have the heart of a lion. Your determination and focus when you set your mind to something is unmistakable. At 13 years old, your mental and physical toughness is something that inspires everyone around you, including your dad. You are truly a gift from God. Ryder, I'm not certain that there's ever been an eight-year-old that has ever been more important to a campaign in the state of Georgia than you. <laughs> joy-filled personality can literally change the direction of somebody's day just when you walk in the room. The passion you have for life is infectious to all around you, including your dad. You are truly a gift from God. To know where someone's going, you've got to know how they got there. This whole political process started out of nowhere for Brooke and I on a lazy Sunday morning walking into a church. A church service that inspired us to stop complaining and to start getting involved. That involvement eventually took the shape of a state house seat for five years and has eventually led us here to the stage today. We didn't run for lieutenant governor because we thought it was likely or because we thought it was going to be easy. We ran for lieutenant governor because that's where we felt like we were called to be. I start the first day of my job as Georgia's lieutenant governor knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt 
that God is why I'm here. Eleven million Georgians are counting us as state leaders to have 21st century solutions for 21st century problems. And that's exactly what I intend to do. Let's look for ways to dramatically improve the way we educate the next generation by leveraging technology. Let's look for ways to dramatically improve the way we deliver health care in this state by leveraging technology. Let's look for ways to become the technology capital of the Southeast and create an ecosystem of talent that leads a global economy. Let's also take an old play out of the playbook from a century ago and start to lean into the talents and resources of what I like to call the four C's, churches, charities, corporations, and citizens. This was the cornerstone concept behind a rural health care bill that I wrote a number of years ago. Let's lean into our communities with those talents and resources, and as Lieutenant Governor, I'm going to look for additional opportunities to take advantage of the four C's. In closing, I'm excited about a lot of things. I'm excited about the people I get to go to work with every single day. Governor Kemp, Speaker Ralston, the State Senate, the State House, and other leaders from around the state. I'm really excited about the bright future of Georgia. I believe our best days are in front of us, and I want 11 million people in every corner of this state to wake up every single day, regardless of their political party, and realize those best days are in front of us also. It's an absolute honor to be your next Lieutenant Governor. Thank you for your confidence and continued support, and may God bless the great state of Georgia. Thank you. Pramana Sweeker and Manantaram, Sabikulanta, Jarjia Jatia Gitam, Alapincharu. Sabala Unavaranta, Karathala Dwanulato, Kota Jarjia Governor Ku, Swagatam Palikaru. Please welcome Corporal Lewis C. Thompson of Dawson County, a 97 year old veteran of World War II. He served in the U.S. Army in the China, Burma, India campaign from 1943 to 1945. Thompson was based in Burma, now called Myanmar where he flew over 1,000 missions as a kicker, pushing needed supplies, food, and ammunition from a low-flying aircraft to our troops on the ground. In recognition of his service, Thompson was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross with three Oak Leaf Clusters, an Air Medal with four Oak Leaf Clusters, a Good Conduct Medal, an Asiatic Theater Campaign Ribbon, and two Bronze Stars. He is here with us today, accompanied by his two daughters and their husbands, Corporal Lewis Thompson will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, Join us as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. The anthem will be sung by Ms. Emma Long of Pickens County.
ప్రమాణ స్వీకారం అనంతరం బ్రీన్ కిమ్ మాట్లాడుతూ జార్జియా ఇమిగ్రేషన్ సిస్టమ్ క్రమబద్దీకరిస్తామని గన్స్ వాయిలెన్స్ డ్రగ్స్ ను అరికడతామని పేర్కొన్నారు మరియు జార్జియాను చిన్న సైజ్ బిజినెస్ లకు స్వర్గధామంగా నిలుపుతామని శక్తివంతంగా మరియు సురక్షిత ప్రాంతంగా తీర్చిదిద్దుతామని తెలిపారు Our universities and teams are recognized just like our accents and southern hospitality. <laughs> With unprecedented growth and unmatched opportunity, it is a great time to be a Georgian. But we didn't get here alone. Many went before us and charted the course. Men and women, some famous, others not, who poured the foundation for us to build. People like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Supreme Court Justice Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas every 
day to keep Georgia moving in the right direction. My vision is for a safer, stronger state. I know it can be done. Coach Henderson's life and career. Coach Henderson's life and career were marked by adversity. He endured countless challenges that molded him as a man and inspired him as a leader. As a boy, Coach lost his father. His mom would walk to work instead of spending money on the bus so he, she could afford uniforms for Billy. On Labor Day in 1964, Coach Henderson's oldest son, Brad, died in a tragic car accident. He mourned, but never missed a day of practice. Coach inherited losing teams with losing attitudes, but he hunkered down and got to work. Coach always scheduled the hardest games so he could turn weakness into opportunity. And while we're experiencing incredible growth as a state, we have our challenges as well. Many seem too big to fix. Small businesses throughout Georgia still feel like it's 2009. 63% of our third graders aren't reading at grade level. Mental health issues, opioid abuse, and sex trafficking plague our communities. 